Hi, this is Ryan Yancey, lead pastor with Kingsfield Zurich Mennonite Church. Thanks for joining me for these few minutes together, and it's my hope and it's my prayer that as we look at a little bit of scripture and uh, pray together that your hearts will be encouraged. Here we are, uh, a couple weeks in now, into the our new realities with COVID-19. And, and so something that's crossed my mind, I wonder how this, this connects with you. Um, have you been feeling a little bit frustrated with yourself? Have you maybe been experiencing uh, anxiety where you hoped that you would feel peace? Have you become maybe a little bit more sharp or tongued with, with those around you? Have you been feeling stressed? Have you been feeling lonely? So for, for myself, confession time that I have not felt as peaceful during these last couple weeks as I wish that I did. Truth be told that as, I'm, as I've been uh, spending a lot more time at, at home, obviously, and with my, with my wife and my kids, I've been a little bit grumpier than I prefer that I would be. I've been feeling a little bit more stressed out about the things that I need to get done. Um, in my role as pastor, I've got a lot of things that I'm trying to track right now and, and just feeling a little more stressed out and, and, and different things that normally would just roll off my back um, things that people say or do have been irritating me in ways that they not normally would have. And uh, so I don't know about you, but for myself, I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to navigate this a little bit more smoothly than what I am. And so it's easy to become frustrated with myself. And, and that adds to the feeling of unsettledness of like, ah, man, I wish I was coping better than this. I'm not sure if you can identify with that. I don't know if you're feeling similar things in your own life. So in light of that, I'd like to encourage you to take a few moments and to offer yourself grace. I want to encourage you to take a few minutes and to offer yourself grace. God is compassionate. We need to remember that. God is compassionate. Psalm 145 verses 8 and 9, if we turn to that in Scripture, Psalm 45, verses 8 to 9 say the following. They say, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all he has compassion on. He has compassion on all whom he has made. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Those are truths that we need to receive in these days of unsettledness and anxiety. God has compassion on all that he has made. Think of a moment in your lifetime when you have felt compassion. Maybe it was when a scrawny stray cat uh, came up to your the back door of your, your house and you decide, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed this, this little thing. You felt compassion in your heart toward that little creature. Maybe you think back to when you helped uh, a kid. They fell off their bike and uh, so they've got a scrape and they're, they're bleeding and crying and you feel compassion. You go over and you clean the wound and you wipe their tears and, and you give them a hug. I'm sure we can all remember moments like this in which we have offered compassion. And when we think of how those experiences felt for us, those are glimpses into who God is. Those are glimpses into how God has offered compassion to his people. God is gracious and compassionate. So when we think of God being gracious and compassionate, let's back the train up a little bit. Let's go back to the starting point at which God extends his mercy to us. When we look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us, and he will purify us from all unrighteousness. I think a central part there is this idea that if we confess our sins, this is how we take that first step of receiving God's mercy. We need to tell God about the wrong that we have done. Does God need us to tell him? Is he unaware of the bad things that we've done until we bring it to his attention? Well, of course not. God is all-knowing. God is omnipresent, means he, he is everywhere, and so he sees and knows everything that we do, everything that we think, everything that we say. God is all-knowing. He does not need us to confess our sins in order to become informed. Rather, our confession 
is about the posture of our hearts. It's about us taking the road of humility. It's about us acknowledging these, these things that we've done against God. These things that we are struggling with, with, which harm us and harm others. And so we confess them to God. This does something significant in our hearts. It opens up the path for us to return to right relationship with God. Of course, this doesn't come natural. Our tendency is to want to hide the things we've done, to, to keep a, a brave face on and say, everything's okay, I'm fine, I don't want anyone to know. I know that that's the inclination within my heart. But God invites us to confess it. Because of his mercy, it's okay, it's safe, because he loves us deeply, no matter what. When we come and we confess our sin to God, that opens up the way for his mercy to be extending to us. And forgiveness is ours. This is a promise of God in these scriptures. It says he is faithful. He is just, meaning he will do the right thing. He will forgive our sins and he will purify us from all unrighteousness. So while we feel guilt, he will remove that guilt from us. When we deserve the judgment of God for the bad things that we have done, God removes that and he says, you are now righteous. There's a number of places in scripture that indicate that Jesus, the one who is truly and perfectly righteous, he extends his righteousness to us. We are not righteous. We struggle, we sin, we have bad attitudes. Jesus was perfect. He replaces our unrighteousness with his righteousness. This is the gift of ultimate peace. And so I invite you in these times to place your sin and your foible upon God. He is mercy and just. He is compassionate. He is gracious. He will take it from you. And if you've never actually for the very first time opened up your life to God, I invite you to make that first step of confession. I invite you to place your faith in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus and the power that who he is and what he has done has to forgive your sin and to give you eternal life, to give you righteousness for the very first time for the remainder of your life. Scripture tells us that when we place our faith in him, he calls us saints. I have not felt like a saint in the last number of days. This is hard to believe that I could be considered a saint, a holy person. But that's exactly what happens when we place our faith in Jesus. So I want to encourage you in the days to come, make sure that you give yourself grace. Make sure that you receive the mercy of God. When you feel upset, when you feel um, unsettled by the way that you've been responding to all of this, remember that God has forgiven you and rest in that truth. Let that give peace to your soul. Jesus is not frustrated with you. Even though you might be, he is not. And if Jesus isn't frustrated with us, then I think it's also quite all right for us to not be frustrated with ourselves. I invite you to make sure that you are believing in and receiving the grace and the compassion of Jesus in these days. How does that sound? I'm going to enter into a time of prayer together. I'd like you to know that there are many who are praying for you as residents of the Blue Water Rest Home. There are many who are praying for your staff, for your administration during these times. We know that uh, there's a lot of adjustments going on at the rest home. We know that there's an extra um, burden of care placed upon the staff members at this time. And we know for you as residents being up, um, up in your elder years, we know that there's an added level of vulnerability to COVID-19. And we know that that adds um, stress. We know that that adds uncertainty. And so I just want you to know that there are many, many people who are praying for you. Every, uh, every day, Monday to Saturday, I've been gathering online on the internet to pray together with a group of about 25 people, um, mostly folks from Kingsfield Zurich Mennonite Church, but a few other people as well. And almost daily, we pray for you folks. Almost daily, we pray for the people who are providing care for you. We're asking God to protect the Blue Water Rest Home from this pandemic. We're asking that God would strengthen the staff. We're asking that he would give peace to each one of you. So may that encourage you. May that lift your hearts today. Please know that I and many others are praying for all of you on a daily basis. 
I'd like to share with you a prayer that I came across uh, last week that I found to be particularly meaningful. And it's by a fellow, a Christian Reformed fellow, uh, named Cornelius Plantinga Jr. And the prayer is entitled, A Prayer to God in Anxious Times. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, champion of the universe, we so often fluff ourselves up. Aren't we the only creatures who compose masterpieces of music and art? Do we govern, don't we govern ourselves, enrich ourselves, promote ourselves? Can we not dunk basketballs and hit baseballs and spike volleyballs? Aren't some of us masters of, of comic irony? Other creatures don't practice rocket science, but we humans do. And yet, here we are frightened by a thing so small it can't be seen under most microscopes. It's not even an animal or a plant. It's a virus, a mere parasite, dependent on our own living cells to replicate. And yet, it has shuttered our schools, canceled our fights, and emptied our churches. It has consumed the attention of our leading scientists, wrenched our politics out of shape, dominated our conversations, and scared the daylights out of us. We don't want to get sick, and we don't want to die. We are afraid, O oh God, afraid of a microorganism, afraid of each other. Great and quiet source of peace, quiet our fears. We are wary, uncertain, strung tight. Quiet our fears. We have no idea what the future will bring, but we do know that you will be in our future to hold us there. We cannot quiet ourselves, O oh God. We cannot comfort ourselves, cannot heal ourselves, cannot help ourselves. All we can do is wash our hands and keep our distance. Our rocket science is no good to us for this threat. O oh God, great and quiet source of peace. Quiet us, your anxious ones. And let us cling for comfort to your suffering Son, Jesus Christ. Gather us under his wings. Remind us that he suffers with us, but he's also the great physician. In him, let us not be afraid. Please, let us not be afraid. Amen. God, we offer these prayers to you, and we, we pray again. Maybe, God, it feels to me like I'm praying the same things um, over and over again, but I, I pray this again today. We need your help. We need your help. Guide us in these times. Give us peace. Fill us with hope. I pray, God, that you would enable us to give ourselves the mercy and compassion that you've already given us. Help us to accept ourselves for who we are, despite the many foibles, the sins we still struggle with, and the ways that we continue to not trust in you. Thank you, Jesus, for your work at the cross that made this possible for your shed blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness and that you defeated the power of death so that we can live forever. We have so much to be thankful for. And so Holy Spirit, I pray for your sweet and comforting presence with each resident who watches this video. You have promised us that you are the comforter. So I pray for your blessing and your peace. Guide and protect the Blue Water Rest Home in these days. Fill us with your spirit so that we would have everything that we need to navigate these times. Thank you, God, that you are sovereign, you are in control of all things. And as the prayer we just prayed said, we don't know what the future holds, but we know you will be with us in the future to hold us. That is a wonderful truth. And so we honor you, we lift you high. We praise your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, thank you very much for spending this time with me today. 
It's been good to be with all of you and uh, keep, keep watching for more videos from Pastor Dennis and myself in the, uh, in the days to come. May God be with you today.